Well, it's 11.30, so I think we'll get started. Um, just to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Andrea Maluch. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Communication here at Akron. Um, I am just going to be assisting with kind of keeping the call going smoothly and everything. Um, but uh, our main moderator today is going to be Natalie, correct? <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, Natalie is in uh, Professor Kahiga's classes and she's doing a lot of great work here in the School of Communication. So I am going to turn it over to one of our current superstar students and uh, she'll get us started with the panel. Hello everyone, I'm Natalie Moad. So I'm a senior right now majoring in public relations. Um, I'm the current president of PRSSA and the editor in chief of the Book Delight. So I just have some questions um, for the graduates. So if we want to get started, someone can just start off and then we can just go in order however one wants to answer. So my first question is if you could just introduce yourself and then tell us when you graduated and where you are currently working. Well, I'll jump in. Um, I'm Stacia Waffen, and I graduated twice, in, once in 2003 with a bachelor's degree in business and organizational communication, and in 2006 with a master's degree focused in public relations. So I am currently the director of sales for L'Occitane US. Thanks. Hi, my name is Rita Mai. I graduated twice as well, once in 2002 with a bachelor's in business organizational communication, and in 2005 with the same degree, master's in business organizational communication. I've been teaching part-time at the School of Communication since 2006, and I'm currently still teaching part-time. Okay. I'll, uh... I Oh, you want to go, go Tyler? You're good. No, go All right. Um, <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm Nick Diderio. Uh, I graduated back in 2013 with my degree in public relations. Currently, I am the marketing coordinator here at uh, Surpro headquarters here in uh, Gallatin, Tennessee, which is about 30 minutes outside of Nashville. Uh, if y'all want to come visit. Uh, hi, everybody. I'll jump in now. Uh, my name is Tyler Warner. I graduated in 2015. Um, I am currently a digital assistant editor for the Drew Barrymore Show and CBS Media Ventures. Um, I've, I've only been here for about eight months, but it's been an absolute whirlwind, total blast. Um, uh, and yeah, was that, did I answer the question? I think I answered the question. Yeah. 2015, Drew Barrymore, that's me. <laughs> uh, my name's Katie. I graduated uh, in 2010. Uh, with my bachelor's in mass media communication. I studied specifically radio and television production. Uh, Juan was one of my professors and I am so happy to see him today because it's just, it's always good to see your face. You, just a shout out to Juan because you always have, I just have to, you're just a wonderful human. And so much of what I know today is because of you. Um, so I'm, I think of you often. Um, I currently live in Los Angeles, California. I work as a production coordinator. I'm part of local 871 in IATSE, which is the International Alliance of Stage and Theater Employees. I primarily work in television production, and I'm currently working on a, the 16th season of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I think I'm last. Hard to follow that, Katie. Jeez, thanks. Um, I'm Jessica Papachik. Um, I was with uh, Stacia and I believe Juan. We went. We were. In, we were in school together. Yeah. So um, I graduated in 2000. I'm thinking it was 2004, right? With a, a bachelor's in interpersonal and public communication, and then continued uh, with the master's degree focusing in pedagogy, and graduated from Akron uh, in 2006. Currently, I'm an associate professor of communication at Stark State College, uh, which we have a campus right outside of the University of Akron right now. It's our Akron um, Perkins campus, and our main campus is in North Canton, uh, real close to the Strip Avenue.
Okay, I think that was everyone. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, so we'll jump into our next question, which is kind of two, a two parter. So it is, what has your career path been like? And then did you always know what you wanted to do or was it a journey? I'll start, try to make it brief. I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> I started out in chemical engineering and then went into business and I was going to wear stilettos and sell pharmaceuticals and like a pencil skirt, like powerhouse lady. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to do that either. I don't know what I'm going to do. I remember talking to Dr. Ranser. Hey. And, uh, you know, he was really pushing training and development. And I was like, all right, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to, you know, even Dr. Walter too, I think consultation and consulting firms. And then I don't know, I think it was probably in my fourth year of college and I was just sort of lost. I'm like, I don't know what I want to do here. Like, this is just, it's getting the best of me. You know, the goal was get the degree and get out. There really wasn't a whole lot of meaning there for me yet. And I think it was Dr. Harpine when he was still there who looked at me and said, you know, maybe you could just uh, stay and get your master's degree and teach. And I laughed, like I choked and laughed at the same time because I could not wait to get out. I was like, no, I need this paper so I can start my life. And um, then I thought about it. I was like, wow, I think I could do that. I think I want to do that. Oh my God, I never thought about that. Like I'd never once considered that I was capable of being a professor um, or being professorial. That wasn't in my nature first First year, uh, first college grad and family. Um, some of my aunts and uncles didn't even finish high school. So um, I have one who's illiterate too. So um, it, it just wasn't even in my field of vision. And then once it was put there, I, I was, I was on a mission. Um, and so, but it took me until like my fifth year in college to figure it out. I transferred a whole bunch of schools and lost a bunch of credit in between. So it took me five years to get my bachelor's degree. Um, but once I figured that out and I was like, you know what, this is what I wanna do. Um, there was pretty much no no stopping me at that point. And, and, and then I figured it out, but it, you know, it was just one happenstance conversation. One idea that I had just kind of pushed off at uh, at you know at the inception there and then came back to it and that's how I found out what I wanted to do is that I wanted to be this and some of those inspirational teachers for me were um, uh, Natalie Sidorenko, Dr. Walter, Ranser, um, Dr. Treese. They were just huge inspirations of who I want to be and I want to be like that. I want to have a classroom like that. I want to I want to motivate my students like they motivated me. And so that's kind of how I ended up where I ended up was um, just from all of their support and them modeling to me what I wanted to be. So. Okay, I'll jump in. Um, mine was pretty, pretty non-traditional. Um, I kind of knew I, I just want to do production and I wanted to be creative. Um, and I knew that I liked editing, but I, I didn't think that in Ohio, I was going to be able to find a job where I was just editing. So I was like, you know, I was, I was going out for shooting, all kinds of stuff. I did some time in, I did some time in, uh, you know, entertainment. So like setting up projectors and that kind of stuff, you know, just, just trying to be as close to cameras as I could right out of school, because it's, it, it's, it was so cutthroat in 2015. I mean, it still is. Um, so I just kind of went from job to job and just, you slowly like kind of start reaching your way up that ladder. Um, I did some time in news. I did some private uh, marketing media for like a corporation. Um, and then I just kind of like through just being in the right place at the right time and being equipped to, to step in right away, I kind of got drew like by accident. Um, so now I'm just holding on for dear life and having a great time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, everybody gets there differently, you know? So I, I personally had like some family stuff that kept me from, you know, moving away right after school. So, uh, you know, I just had to get there the way I got there. So, um, yeah, it, it's everybody gets their different. That's that's the biggest thing I think you should take away from this question. If you're watching this is just don't you know where you're going next is probably not where you're going to end up. So just think about it as a step. Use it for what you can and, and grow from it. And that's that's kind of what I'm doing. 
I'll uh, hop in uh, very much like Tyler uh, and everybody else. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I found myself at an ad agency. And through that, it was just a whirlwind of a journey uh, through different corporate um, communications and marketing opportunities. And I finally found myself here in Nashville. Never thought that I would. And I get to work for an awesome organization such as Surpro. Um, it's it's really just a journey. And honestly, just take any and every opportunity that you can to kind of figure it out and move your way through uh, through life. I have to say my career path was very different than what I thought. I really knew I was coming out of um, high school and I had done two years of post-secondary work before I actually set foot as a true college freshman um, in the School of Communication and loved, loved every class that I took and was sure that I was going to be an event planner of some sort and that I knew that that was exactly where I was supposed to be and I graduated with that piece of paper, like Jess said, and did it and hated it. And so I wasn't really sure then what I wanted to do and what I was supposed to do. I was here. I was this 21 year old with this degree and in a career that I thought I was going to love and didn't did not enjoy whatsoever. So I decided to come back and um, I took about two years in that in that job and decided I'm going to go back and I'm going to refigure this out. And during my time um, in my graduate work, I fell in love with communicating and really got to see that you can use that and you do use that in absolutely every career. And truly the sky's the limit. You don't have to limit yourself to any one place or any one path. And I actually stayed on after I graduated for 11 years and was teaching in the School of Communication and also over in the Honors College and got to design a course for honors students that was communication in every career path and got to just teach how do we communicate and how do we become better communicators and that I truly miss that so much. But my career has taken me into sales and my my current career path requires me, my current job required me to travel quite a bit. So teaching had to get set to the side. I look forward to being able to come back and do that. But I've kind of been all over the place. And now I truly am in a place that I absolutely love and um, a very cliche, but I feel like I am blessed and living my best life for sure. But it's taken me a lot of years and a lot of trial from um, being in the sales field to now being in more of a corporate coaching and training sales um, consultants and leaders, and to really find where I believe is my home and my passion. Um, I will jump in. I When I started at the University of Akron, I got accepted into the School of Communication, but when I that was like when I applied. And then when I went to school, I was like, no, political science, that's where it's at. So I started taking government classes and, and I was, you know, like I was in the honors college and I'm like, just kind of, I remember undergrad being a lot of me trying to like, look at everything that's in front of me and like, take as much of it as I can. Um, and I think I was worried about like where I was going to end up because of that. Um, because I think a lot of times, you know, when, when you speak to people in general, they're like, and what do you do? And what do you want to be? And it has to be this like one thing. And that'll, you know, I always felt like that would hold me back from doing all of the things I wanted to do. Um, and I think I got to explore that a lot at, at Akron. Um, when I was there, I got like magnetically attracted to being at ZTV. Like I saw the ZTV door at the School of Communication and I was like, what is that? That's what I, I'm, where's the application? Like I, I remember feeling like immediately like compulsed to join ZTV. Um, and I think that ended up shaping so much of my experience at the school. It really felt like the, the place that I was thriving the most. So I think that influenced a lot of the decisions I made following graduation. Um, I immediately went to the Disney College program after I graduated because I, I, I loved the company and I wanted to 
I wanted to work for Disney Entertainment, you know, like I, I wanted to be in that realm. Um, so I ended up moving to Orlando and working for the parks for about three years. I started in the college program and then I did a really cool professional internship. And then I got to jump around and do a bunch of cool things. And and then I was like, OK, this is a lot of fun, but like. It doesn't feel like what I was setting out to do. Um, so then I ended up going to grad school at Columbia College Chicago, where I got my master's degree in creative producing. Um, and from there, they feed you right into LA. Uh, so that <laughs> honestly is probably why I ended up coming out here. I think it gave me the nerve somehow. Um, but yeah, then I came out to LA and started trying to kind of find my way. And LA's a really big, crazy place especially the entertainment industry like it's not like Ohio like it's just entertainment is everywhere um you know I remember even thinking wow there's so many billboards here and they're all for movies and they're all for television shows and I kind of loved that um so then I I ended up getting into production after because it's all like it's not applying to jobs online all the time it's it's shaking hands with people and going to networking events and being like yeah yeah I will I'll, I'll come PA for you whatever you need like just being like ready to go and ready to try all the things and learn all the things I think that is probably my piece of advice from all of this is just like I think that's the one thing that is very helpful to me is like you take yourself like from micro to macro and see like what are all the options and don't be afraid to explore all of the options if you want to. Um, I think that helped me kind of weave my way where I am right now. I ended up networking my way into a production assistant job on a, a Disney television show. So I checked my box. <laughs> um, and that, you know, I grew from there. I was an executive assistant for a little bit. I've done scripted. I've done documentary. I've done commercial. Um, and and I think television, long form television is kind of where I've found my, my place a bit. Um, and I think coming there and, and seeing, okay, here are my skill sets. These are the things I'm like especially good at and I enjoy doing. Um, and kind of once you find that place, then the opportunities come to you and you just have to pick them. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just, you know, slowly climbing up the ladder as much as possible. Uh, I coordinate primarily, so I do all the logistics of things, which is kind of my bread and butter. I love problem solving. And so that's really what I do every day is solve a bunch of problems. Um, and put out fires and hope that it all turns out okay and safe. Um, so yeah, that's that's been my career tra trajectory. Thank you guys. I think that was everyone, I'm pretty sure. Um, so we can move on to our next question. So have any of you switched careers midstream? How did you decide to do that? So you might have touched on this a little bit, but if you wanna explain more. I might just jump in there real quick because I did mention that I, I did kind of do a pivot um, when I was working with parks at uh, Disney. I was doing operational work. Um, so a lot of. Want to remember this, I worked at a movie theater through all of high school and all of undergrad, and it was a lot of not fun stuff, but like, you know, it's, it's, you know, uh, like a retail job. It's just like that, you know, you're tearing tickets and you're telling people where to go. It's just kind of being the logistical person there. Um, and so I was doing a lot of that at Disney, but I didn't feel like I was doing it in media anymore. Um, so like I was definitely scratching that itch for, you know, problem solving and logistical work, but it didn't seem quite the right fit. Um, and what I ended up deciding to do is go back to, to school. I went to grad school because I thought that another, 
you know, additional education can only benefit me. And that might help me. I was specifically attracted to it because it points you in the direction of working in LA and working in production and media, which is what I, I was thinking I was missing. Um, so that's how I, I, I looked at a, a bunch of different schools and I liked that that school placed you there. So I decided to go back to school and make that change. Things about it that were difficult. I mean, like, yeah, when you've planted your roots somewhere, it's hard to be like, I just want to move to an entirely different state in, you know, a different part of the country. You know, I was going from somewhere really hot to somewhere really cold. All those things, uh, how expensive it is to move. But I don't know, like for me at the time, it was also a lot about the fact that I was already recognizing that it what things weren't quite the right fit. So I felt like I needed to listen to that. And I think that's something that is important when you're thinking about a career shift is like, what is that voice in your head saying? Where's your heart at? And like, does something feel off? Maybe there's a way that you can like kind of scientifically break it down and figure out why does that feel off to me? You know, for me specifically, it was that I wanted to be in media and that was the piece that was missing from it. So you know, I made my decision because that's what worked best for me and because I really wanted a terminal degree. I want to teach at some point. So, uh, you know, that also benefited me. Um, so you just kind of have to to assess, like, if, if I need to make a change, what is it that's telling me that I need to make, like, why do I need to make a change? And just, like, really listen to that and, and don't ignore those feelings because, you know, it's your it's your heart telling you, like, Hey, like let's let's adjust this a little bit. So I think that's my my piece of advice is like don't be afraid to 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 hear that out and and give it a try. I love that, Katie. And I'm just gonna piggyback on what you shared because I think it's all about following your heart and following your passion. And if you have a passion for something, not being afraid to seek it and pursue it. And I'll use myself as an example. I loved being in the sales field and building an organization, um, actually selling and doing, but I knew I wanted more and I I missed being able to coach and to train and to teach like I was doing in the classroom because I was able to do them in tandem for a while. And so some of the best advice I was ever given was go and do the job that you want before you actually have it. So what are those skills or the things that you need to learn to be able to go and do that job and go do that, get better at it, whether you're shadowing somebody that already has that role or you're able in your own organization to find those people that are doing the, the job that you want and to be able to sit in on meetings or pick their brain or be mentored by them but go and seek them out and whether it's taking classes or i mean simply just shadowing somebody to get the skills and to be able to do that job before you actually set foot into it you can enter into that with confidence but then when you go to apply for that job or you know you make that request within your own organization you can say well i've already prepared and i've been doing all of these things plus my regular job and that person looking to fill the role is going to be really excited to to bring you in and that you've already worked ahead and, and prepared yourself. And I, I continue to do the same. I always want more for myself. I tend to never be content exactly perfectly in the role that I'm in. And even now as that coach and trainer, and I'm getting to use my passions and love what I'm doing, I know that there's still more in my career path that I want to be growing into. And so I'm already looking for, okay, what is my next step? It might not even be for five or 10 years from now, but what are some of the skills? What are some of the areas in our industry that I can be learning while I'm doing what I love to prepare me for what's next. I'm going to hop off of that. That's great. Um, that's honestly how I found uh, where I'm at now. Uh, you know, starting in, I was a social media specialist at an ad agency, but I really loved the graphic designers. And actually, I did have my minor in design. And I just, I was like, I would always kind of like talk to them and be like, hey, you know, how, even though I understood the programs, I'm, I wanted to like learn more from them. And so that's how I found myself in the position I'm in now. Um, it's very design heavy, even though it's a marketing coordinator. I, I'm pretty much on Illustrator and InDesign, Photoshop my whole day. Um, so it's just like, it's just finding that passion and learning it and then following through on it. Don't be afraid to jump at things and don't be afraid to say 
yes, I want to do it. Even if you don't know, there's a really great resource called YouTube. Um, it's uh, it's perfect. And uh, there's also TikTok. So if you ever get stuck on anything, I swear there are there's somebody out there that has figured it out. So honestly, just go for it and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Everybody does. And it's honestly, it's what makes you grow and what makes you better. Okay, I'll jump in. Um, I, I obviously did not change streams. I kind of changed fields a little bit. Um, but I, I have a very close friend who did it. Uh, he went back to school at a sort of an advanced age and, and kind of executed it with grace and class. And he was always kind to people and willing and and growth focused. And I think those are the three most important things. If you're If you're kind to everyone you meet, if you work harder than the person next to you every day and you focus on growth, there, there is no, I, I really think there's no where you can't go. So that's my take on it. You can, if you want, you can move on. I think everybody um, jumped in on that one, but me, but why don't you move to the next question? Cause I could take that one. Um, Cause I feel like almost all of us have gone that way anyway with the last one. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing. So the next question is just what advice do you have for individuals who want to make a shift in their career? So, yeah, um, I, I really didn't. I mean, once I found my career, I haven't shifted. I've been teaching for 17 years now, but um, I was working full time when I was getting my um, when I was when I was going to school. Um, so I would piggyback off of what Nick said or alluded to was was risk taking. Um, Dr. Turner is in here, Dudley Turner is in here. He will probably remember, I don't know, you probably won't remember, I'm thinking too much of myself, but I left a full-time career um, to teach four courses as an adjunct professor uh, with full benefits, with really good pay, and they were also paying for uh, part of my education. And I got a phone call from Dr. Turner and he said, I've got four classes for you if you want them. And I, it, I didn't even hesitate. I was like, oh my God, yes. And it's at the place where I currently work. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm going to be a teacher. Like this is going to be, but I left a full-time career to take a part-time job to teach four classes that were only guaranteed for one semester. And that's what I had to do. Because and that's 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 a risk, you know, walking away from a good career because I wanted to pursue what I was passionate about. And that was so scary. It was so scary. Um, and it worked out. I mean, it worked out for me. And I don't know where I would have been if I wouldn't have been a, been willing to take that risk. Um, so I think we have to be we have to be willing to do scary things, to do hard things, to follow what we truly are passionate about. I just wanted to I mean, that that's great. And I always say you have to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. And I left Ohio. I mean, that's all that I knew. And so what, five years ago, I left and came to Tennessee and it's completely new. And it's, it's great, it's fun, but it was like, I don't know where I'm at. And it was just like finding that ground. It was finding that passion. And it was just taking that leap and just take that risk. Even though it's gonna be so scary, it's gonna be, I don't know what's gonna happen next. Go for it, do it and, and just enjoy it. And I think it's important to say that it's okay to make mistakes along the way. Um, I'll be the first to admit that I've taken some risks and maybe not so calculated risks in the last year and a half in my career. And I've learned a ton and I've had a lot of fun and I've been stretched and challenged, but they may not have been the best choices as I turn around and look back at that. But what I do want to emphasize is that I've learned a lot. I've grown as an individual. I've grown as 
a career woman and I've learned a lot about what I do want moving forward and what I definitely do not want as I move forward. And sometimes you're going to take that risk and maybe it doesn't work out in the way that you thought it did, but always look for, you know, what am I getting from this and what am I truly learning in this situation to make the next decision as you move forward. And I'm kind of somebody that I don't, I don't have any regrets about the decisions that I've made. Would I do things a little bit differently if I looked back? Yeah, I probably would, but I'm so grateful for the opportunities that I've been given and to go and have the ability to make those mistakes and to learn a little bit about myself and to continue to grow in my career path as well. Yeah, totally. Rethinking failure is like a big deal. Um, and I feel like the older I get, the more I am able to rethink what failure is. Failure is not, we suck, you know, we're dumb, we're unworthy. It is one step for us to get closer to the truth of who we are, one step closer to understanding what doesn't work or what wasn't a good choice. And all of that is information that we need. We don't get by and be successful by always being successful. The most successful people are the ones who have failed and who have struggled because in that process, we really figure out who we are and where we want, who we want to be and where we want to go. So rethinking that failure, like it does it. They don't always pay off. They really don't. But you still have to be willing to try it sometimes. And, and failure makes you who you are. And you really you learn so much and can grow so much from that. And it's part of your success journey. That's why it's a journey. It's not a stop. So I think failure while it's hard and sometimes it's painful, it's definitely an important part of the journey as well. And everything you guys are saying about failure too, you can apply to hardship as well. I mean, everybody here has had a job they didn't want. You know what I mean? Everybody here has had a job they weren't happy with and they thought, oh man, did I make the right choice? You know, maybe you're fresh out of college and you're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? You know, I'm making X amount of money and I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm hungry. This is It was supposed to be fixed by the degree. You know what I mean? So um, you know, take those hardships and grow from them and, and, and recognize what put you there and, and what you gain from it, because it truly all of that is such a huge opportunity for you to to come out of it as a better uh, person, you know, a better human, a better professional. Um, and, and, and you're never going to there's no peace or happiness in being really good at something that you don't like to do. So really, really think about what you're doing every day and just say, like, is this really what I want? Because there's you know, I know everybody likes to go, oh, there's no jobs. There's a ton of jobs everywhere. If you have the talent, if you have the work ethic, if you have the connections, which you guys do, you have a great network of alumni here. There's there's jobs out there. So don't don't get stuck doing something you don't want to do. Just don't. It's 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 not it's not what you want. I promise. I've been there. I think too, there's something to be said about looking out and seeing if there's a job that, you know, fits and suits you. But like if you don't see that go make it, go be it. Like you can do that. It is possible. That's how all the other jobs were created because somebody else was like, oh, this should be a thing. And now it is. So if you're, you're out there and you're like, you know, I kind of want to be like a YouTuber, but I want to do hyper educational videos that are like super immersive and done it. Like, I don't know anyone like that, that is like doing what exactly I'm thinking of. Then you know, try it, like experiment. Don't be afraid to, to just like see and put your foot in the water, you know, and just kind of feel what the temperature is. Um, you know, cause like, okay, to just go with, with this, uh, image, you know, when you step into the ocean, it's really cold at first. And you're like, no, I will go back on the beach now. But, you know, if you go and swim out a little bit further, your body's going to acclimate and you're going to warm up again and it's going to feel really nice. You know, like, let that be the image for you. But the, the world is like that, you know, like, don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. Don't be afraid to figure out if you're not seeing what you want to just go, go create it. Um, and a lot of times you'll you'll find success in that direction because you're filling a gap that needs filled. you guys so much so we only have a couple more questions left so this one um 
is just what advice do you have for students or seasoned professionals who are trying to find their niche? I think I would just say, um, like my story in the beginning, I just happened to find mine through a conversation, through something that I originally just heard and thought it was ridiculous and threw it away. But when you're trying to find your niche, I think you have to listen to yourself. But at the same time, I think a lot of us are also, I know I tried to listen to myself, but myself wasn't telling me anything. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what I like. I like everything. That was my problem. I loved everything. Like I liked to do so much, kind of like Katie was saying, I want to do all of these things. Like there's so many things. I don't know which one I want to do. Like, it, And it's overwhelming sometimes for some of us who don't have the one thing, you know, friends who were, I want to be a policeman the day I was born. I'm going to be a kindergarten teacher. I want to be a nurse. Like there's some of these people who just have it and they just know. And it's like, I was so jealous of that. And I think not only do you have to listen to yourself, but when yourself isn't telling you a whole lot, we need to look to others. What are others telling you? And not necessarily directly, but indirectly through feedback. What are they telling you that you're good at? What are they telling you that like you have talent in? Um, what do they appreciate about you? So it's really sort of this, you know, mindfulness about the feedback that we're getting from others. Um, and when others can see things in you that you haven't necessarily seen in yourself, it helps you to be more aware of who you are. So it gives you, I think, some clarity in in that those those of us like me who were really muddy at one point you know there's so many things i don't know which way i want to go and i can't quite figure it out so if we don't have that inner voice driving us i think one of the ways that you can find your niche is to just be very um conscious of what you're hearing from others about you and what you are good at and what they appreciate about you my biggest thing with that, I think, and I love what you said, I, but my thing is just like, I would say, be willing. Like, that's that's my biggest thing. It's just always be willing. I mean, don't, you know, it, everything is a chance to learn, to grow. I know I keep saying the same things, but it's true. Um, you know, just say yes to those opportunities. Say yes to those little things because every single thing you do that's new or that it's different to you is, again, an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow, to make an impact on people that you don't know yet, to show your your worth, your talent you know, your smarts, whatever it is, just don't be afraid to, um, to, to be willing and to, and, and take those opportunities and find what you like, because, you know, you might, if you're like me at all, you might love editing and hate shooting and lighting, you know, and that's fine. Um, you just got to find what, what part of it you like, because at, at the highest level, there's a person doing every single one of those jobs. So if you're, if you're an editor, you don't have to worry about lights anymore. It's great. Or if you're shooting, you don't have to worry about it's, it, you know what I mean? So, find that thing that you like excel in it and just be willing and and don't be afraid of it just just push yourself every day you know seriously just just put yourself it you know everybody keeps saying discomfort but it's true just be uncomfortable it's not it's not that bad <laughs> i i want to just kind of piggyback on what someone said i think katie i think it was you earlier about networking when you're not sure that you know you're 100 percent content in the in the role that you're in or in the career that you're in but you see other people and you think, well, that kind of looks like fun or, oh, well, that looks really interesting. Go talk to those people and just just network with them, get to know them better, get to know what they're doing and if you can shadow them. And I think that's a really great way to find some new areas that you can explore before you do take that leap or decide, oh, this is definitely the direction I want to go from somebody who was very staunch in what she thought she wanted to do and really didn't listen to other people to take the time to explore different things. If I could go back and do it differently, I would have done many more internships and I would have talked to many more career professionals and would have explored some different options. But the beauty is that we're never stuck in one place. And there are so many people doing so many really different and creative things. And look beyond titles. Um, just because, I mean, I have a director of sales title, but I spend most of my time coaching and training. And you wouldn't think that by that title. 
So really dig in and get to know know people and ask a lot of questions. Um, I'm a big fan of, and my kids know it too, closed mouths don't get fed. Ask questions. It, it, the answer is always no, or you're not going to know unless you ask. And there are so many people that are willing to help and mentor and share that there's no reason you ever have to feel stuck in one place. I just want to real quick add one thing to that. I just recently did a workshop with um, the Motion Picture Editors Guild, uh, the union that I'm in, um, and and what you're saying about, you know, just go talk to those people. Everything that that if you see a show, right? If you're into Game of Thrones, if that's your thing, if you're into the NFL, whatever, the people that produce those are just people like you and me. You can go on LinkedIn. You can figure out who those people are. Reach out to those people. Just send the person that's doing the job you want a message like, hey, look, I want to do what you're doing. How did you get here? Can you help me at all? Is there any advice you can give me? It is okay. It is totally okay to reach out to that. It happens every day. Just talk to people, you know, gather information. Um, it, it's, you know, if you can't, if you can't find the job, a lot of times these dream jobs, you're not going to find just a posting. But you can find the people that do it. You can find the people that are next to the people that do it, the people that are friends with the people that do it, that worked with the person that did it in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? So find those people, talk to those people, and build that network, even if they just know your name. Sometimes that's enough. So. Yeah, I couldn't. I I couldn't agree more. If you're if you're looking to shift, um, or or just kind of find that passion. What is something that you often think about uh, when you're at work? Is there like another thing that you're doing a lot of or again, you're seeing another department do go talk to them? Like Tyler just said, they're just people. We're all just people We're we love to talk about things. So just approach them. Don't be afraid and just be like, hey, tell me more about what you do. I want to do that. So go for it. Don't and don't hold yourself back. I think and I would just add in there like I get the the sense of having maybe some um, nervousness or like caution when you want to ask people that because you're worried that people might be protective of their knowledge or their expertise. But I read something and it it might be Dale Carnegie. I'm not sure, but um, I read something once and the idea is that most people like being experts in things. And if you ask them, hey, I noticed you're really great at this thing, and I wondered if you could tell me more about it, people, for the most part, are going to be interested in sharing that with you because they enjoy sharing that with people. They enjoy what they do. Um, their expertise is their passion. And I think, you know, you might get a, a few grumpy people along the way, but like, I think people like to be asked about their expertise. And when I thought about it that way, it made it a lot easier to approach people and ask questions that I wanted to ask. Um, so that's just something that like kind of helped me out as well as far as networking goes. And LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, an absolute like really great tool for this specifically. I get cold emails in LinkedIn all the time and I answer most of them. Um, so yeah, definitely find those people and and just cold email them. Like just say, hey, sorry for the cold email or, you know, I'm just fascinated by what you do. Wondered if I could have five minutes of your time to just ask you a few quick questions um, and just be intentional with your networking too, you know, like find those people and figure out what those questions are that you have so that when you go to them, you're ready, you know, and you're not wasting their time. Thank you guys. And then our last question I'm super excited for. Um, so what advice do you have for students about preparing for the professional world? I'll uh, jump in. Um, there's there's a cut like there's a whole spectrum of things I want to say, um, but most importantly, stand out, make yourself stand out. Do not be like everybody else and understand you're gonna, you're entering a job market that has thousands of other creatives. So be different, learn how to market your skills and learn how to set yourself apart. Make a website of your portfolio. So when you go to an interview, obviously bring your resumes, don't forget to do that and print them out on some resume paper. I know it's a little expensive, but do it. It makes a mark and bring your portfolio with you. I always say, show me, don't tell me. Like you can tell me all day long, you know how to do boilerplates, all this other stuff, 
but show me. I want to see it and and do that and just be confident when you go into an interview and don't compare yourself to others. Don't feel like, oh, so-and-so has 20 interviews lined up and I don't have anything. I did that to myself and it's destructive. So don't don't compare yourself to others. Be different. Be ready to go. And when you go to those interviews, just kill it. Just be yourself and just kill it and just show what you can do. And also, if you want to you connect with me on LinkedIn, I'd be more than happy to to help you out. I know everybody else will. Um, so go for it. You have to be unique. Um, you have to be something different. You have to be willing. Like I say, that that's my favorite word. I know um, you have to be passionate. I believe some people don't believe that. I think you have to have passion. Um, and you have to know how to just get back up because especially, especially if you're doing something technical, it's, there is a very long line of people knocking at the door of every single one of those jobs. So you have to have the talent. You have to be able to grow. You can't get comfortable. You can't sit back on your heels. The day you stop trying to advance is the day you start losing, in my opinion. So as you push forward, just know you're not going to, you might not, some people do. And you know, if you're one of those people, great, I'm happy for you. But if, if you find your first job right away and it's everything you've ever wanted, I'm so happy for you. That's awesome. A lot of you are going to struggle. Um, it's just the reality. You know, this is a tough field. Communications is a tough field. There's, it's a young field. Um, it's very fast. It grows. It changes, you know, every single day. Um, so just, you have to be flexible willing you have to have a great attitude you have to make a good impression on everyone you come across even if it's like a job you're not sure about you it's a throwaway interview maybe you're just like oh this is gonna back up just make that impression because that person that's interviewing you you might bump into them down the road they might be you know maybe they didn't go to akron but maybe they went to kent so you have that weird connection there so it's like oh i you know i remember you you, went to, you know what i mean so just every single person and please don't take this the wrong way is is something you can I'm going to say use, but I don't mean that word. Like it's, it's every single connection is someone you can speak to call email, whatever, just get yourself out there and, and be kind. I mean, that's, that's truly the biggest thing because, and if you're applying for a job, you know that you can do that job or, or to your best of your ability. Cause I can't tell you how many times I would take a resume for a sports videographer or something. And I, I there's no real, um, and I'm like, guys, you know, I got to know you're, you can do this job. So you know, and don't be afraid. This is another thing. Um, don't be afraid to like do your own work on your own time to show that you're capable to show you have talent. Like, don't be afraid to go out with a camera or, you know, if you're a, if you're a designer, do some freelance work or whatever it is, you know, just um, make that portfolio so big that you can't be ignored. Like I can, I can walk into an interview right now and say, I can do news. I can do daytime talk. I can do this. I can do that. And I can prove it. You know what I mean? So go in with that attitude. You have to be confident. Even if that's not like a hat you normally wear, just go in there. Like you are just like, I am the guy for your job, whether you know it or not, I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm the guy girl for the, your job. And I'm going to show you right now, even if you don't believe it. I'm going to bank right off of that. I don't believe it because that's what hit me. Um, and it's called imposter syndrome. And I tell you what, um, it can really take hold. <laughs> Tyler just admitted to seeing it in many of his people. But um, when I, I, and I did, I did exactly what Tyler said. I went into that interview. I nailed it. I knew every single one of those people, their name, their background. I called them by name. I sent them individual thank you letters. I mean, I went to impress and I got the job and then I got the job and got off the phone and I thought, oh my God, can I do this? <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. I've sold myself so high. I don't know if I can actually, I, I don't even know. I don't think I, I don't think I can do this. I think I've just believed in myself, but I, I'm actually not capable of doing all of the things that I said. And yeah, I am. <laughs> and yes, I was, but that imposter syndrome can hit really fast where we start to doubt ourselves especially if we did struggle a little bit to get where we are um and we need to be aware of that we need to catch it really fast because if we don't if we aren't mindful enough that that syndrome is sort of kicking in on us 
it can take us to some pretty bad places. And so, especially as a um, student preparing to head out into that professional world, you're now moving from student to professional. Um, sometimes some, the imposter syndrome hit when we were in school. Like, I don't belong here. Like, I know it hit for me. Like, I'm, I, my family doesn't go to college. You know, this is, everybody else wanted this for me. They wanted me to be the one to make it out. But I need to want this for myself. But I don't know if I can do it. Um, Self-doubt is normal. And it, it helps us reflect. But when it becomes too much, it can become overwhelming and actually start to prevent us from doing the best that we can actually do. So recognize um, that imposter syndrome may very well start to set in and recognize it and then start to, um, you know, use that positive self-talk. And like Tyler said, start to, um, you know, start to prove it, start to even prove to yourself, I can do this and have a growth mindset that I can continue to learn and continue to do better every single day in my personal and my professional life. And that that's what you're supposed to be doing. None of us come out of school perfect and just 1000% ready for the job. We come out imperfect and ready to learn and do better. And we have to have that attitude um, moving forward. And we have to believe that we are capable of doing that because we are. I hire a lot of PAs. And so I interview a lot of people every year. And those people come to work for me. And I would say that my advice for folks joining the professional world for the first time is that, you know, first of all, be present, have a present mindset in your workspace. Um, work life balance is extremely important. And especially today, in the way that our world is moving into more digital communications, especially the Zooms and the, the Microsoft team meetings, like it, I find it really easy to consume my two worlds of, of work and life and just let them melt together. And so that's something that I <laughs> never heard of it. Yes, me either. Um, yeah, that that's something that I have had to struggle with a lot, you know, and, and the self-doubt plays into that. It, it feeds into a lot of those things. So I would, in general, just find a way I'm a proponent of practicing meditation. I think it's really helpful when you're a busy person to be able to let yourself distinguish yourself from your thoughts and and knowing that those are, are different things, separate things. Um, so bring that into the workplace, find your presence in the workplace. But also I would say on, a, on, another, on, on another level, be adaptable and be, I think, Tyler, what was your word? Willing willing to do the tough stuff. Um, I find that, you know, if you if I hire two people to do a PA job and one of them is completely green and has never done it before, that I almost enjoy working with those people more sometimes because then I can help them figure things out for themselves. So you're only going to be that green position once let yourself be ready to absorb all the things around you and see what's happening and how can you be adaptable within that environment? And how can you be flexible and fit in and, and contribute? You know, so just that mindset in general overall is really important. And I think that differentiates people when I hire them, if they come in with that kind of attitude of like, I'm at work and I'm ready to do the things and I'm ready to like, I know that I can give you all of the tasks, even if you don't know how to do it. If you're like, I don't know, but I'm ready to learn. Uh, I'm going to be like, heck yes, come here. Let's talk about it. You know, like um, that's just me, but like own it, you know, own it and just run with it. Yeah, you can't you can't fake it after a certain point. That's for sure. And TV, I mean, Katie, you know, TV is a zoo, so. And I'm going to add just one last sorry, little Natalie. thing. Oh, sorry, Natalie. Do you need to cut us off? No, you're fine. I just want to okay. sure if anyone else. Just anything. little thing. Sometimes you have to be willing to maybe take a step back or take a step laterally 
to get to where you want to go next. And I mean, I can tell you like that's right where I'm at today is taking a move that is is really similar to what I'm doing rather than always moving forward or even taking a step back because I've taken a a much larger role and now I'm like, oh, I really miss what I used to do and that that previous position. So being willing to explore options that that aren't always like the next big thing um, just to get you in a better place. Maybe it's a better company, a better organization where there might be more future opportunities. Don't be um, so tunnel vision or narrow focused that we miss out on some of those other opportunities that could happen down the road. It says that there's five minutes left, but I just want to open up the floor to questions from anyone else. Um, you can ask and hopefully everyone can answer. May I jump in for a second? One of the things that you alluded to, but didn't say exactly using the terminology is get a mentor who you can work with and who can propel you forward. Uh, I think that all of you have a mentor that you probably, uh, maybe he's in the corner right now, Juan, um, but have a mentor who will help you out. I moved to Ohio because of my mentor. I was not supposed to come to um, uh, the University of, uh, for my PhD, I wasn't supposed to come to Kent State. I was supposed to go to Penn State. But my mentor at Queens College in New York, Dr. Dominic Infante, he said, Andy, I'm moving back to Ohio to Kent State University. Why don't you come with me and I'll help you out? And, you know, 40 years later now, uh, he's, you know, he's not with us any longer. But if you have a mentor, uh, that will help you very, very much in your career. Are there any other questions or comments for the panelists? All right, I don't want to cut us off too early, but um, I do want to give everybody a chance to have a little bio break and uh, get something to drink. And so uh, I've posted the link to the closing ceremony in the chat so you can access it there and we will see you all in five minutes or so. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you guys so much for being here, Thank everybody. You. It's It's been a pleasure. Thanks.